Hey, welcome back. So as you can see, I'm recording this video while using the YOLO algorithm, which is an open source object detection tool that utilizes deep learning to achieve fast and accurate results. So you can see here, I have a phone here. It picks that up really easily. For some reason, it thinks my guitar is a bottle sometimes, but I guess that's because it can't see the full guitar. But anyway, what's not so obvious is that I'm running this on an AMD RX 6700 XT GPU. And this is possible thanks to the recent advancements in the RockM software stack, which is AMD's answer to NVIDIA's CUDA. This means that popular machine learning frameworks such as PyTorch and TensorFlow are able to run smoothly on AMD GPUs. Now, RockM isn't just meant for machine learning, but rather it's a vast open source platform that spans several domains, including general purpose computing on GPUs and also high performance computing for scientific and engineering applications. Now, this is a pretty big deal if you've been glued into the world of AI, because for years, NVIDIA had a stranglehold on this market and the only way to run machine learning models was either through the CPU, which is relatively slow, or on an NVIDIA GPU. But all that has changed now, and AMD has now become a legitimate competitor in machine learning and GPU computing applications. Now, setting up Rockem was fairly straightforward, but it is slightly more involved than getting CUDA set up. It also depends on the distro you're using. As far as Ubuntu goes, it seems there's some dependency issues at the moment while installing PyTorch with Rockem, which is why I recommend using an Arch-based distro instead. I'll be doing a more in-depth guide soon showing how to install and set up Rockem with PyTorch. So if you're interested in following along, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll also be doing a separate guide for NVIDIA GPUs as well. But for today, I just wanted to do a general overview to prove how well Rockem actually works with various machine learning models, including YOLO object detection, stable diffusion, and chatbots similar to ChatGPT. So let's first talk about the object detection model I'm currently using. YOLO stands for You Only Look Once, and it made a big splash when it was first released back in 2015 because of how much faster it was compared to the competition. Since then, it has become the most recognized algorithm for object detection, and there's been numerous iterations of it, with each version improving its accuracy. Generally speaking, the newer models will work best on newer hardware, and while V8 does work fine on my GPU, I found that V6 offers drastically better performance, especially when using the Nano model, which gives a surprisingly high frame rate of around 120 FPS. I've been using the small model for this video though, which gives considerably better accuracy. And as you can see, I get a frame rate of around 60, which is still really good. But now let's move on to something else. Let's see how well Stable Diffusion works with Rockem. So here's the browser-based GUI. There's quite a few options and settings here, including a tab that allows you to easily train your own customized models. But let's just try out a few examples with the default model for now. So I'll first enter something simple and straightforward. Let's try Batman. So you can see it just takes a few seconds to generate. And there it is, pretty good. Now let's try something a little more specific. Let's try Batman riding a skateboard. And now it's done. And that's pretty good. I mean, the skateboard looks a little funny, but that is uh, what I asked for. So now let's try something else. R Batman riding a scooter. And yeah, so you can see it works pretty well and it's obviously working on the GPU since it only takes a few seconds. Now let's try something more esoteric, a black hole sun. Well, wow, that's pretty cool. I'd say that that can be considered a work of art. 
Uh, let's try another one. Each time you push generate, it will produce a new image. And again, that looks pretty cool. That could pass as psychedelic art, in my opinion. Alright, so next let's take a look at a chatbot similar to ChatGPT. The more parameters a model contains, the better it will be. But they'll also require more memory, which is the main limitation when running these. The RX 6700 XT contains 12GB of VRAM, which is pretty solid and it can run quite a few models, but it's not enough to run the most demanding ones. So I had to settle for the models that are considered mid-range. You can see here I have three models already downloaded. The first is Meta's Galactica, which is trained in scientific data to help academics do papers and research. The next one is Pygmalion, which is an unfiltered chatbot, and it can lead to some pretty hilarious conversations. The best way to describe it is a playful troll posting on internet forums. The last one is Vicuna, which is a general chatbot similar to ChatGPT but not quite as powerful, but it's still very optimized for consumer grade hardware like what I have. So I'll load this one up. And as you can see here, VRAM allocation is pretty high and is approaching the 12 gigabyte limit. The nice thing about using a GPU is that responses are very quick. So here's a few examples of some questions I asked it. But as I show these, I wanted to talk about some observations I've had about the state of this technology in general. So even if you do have the hardware to run the most demanding models, it has become apparent that chatbots in general are not ready for prime time yet. That's because of how unreliable they are. And while they are useful for some tasks, I think it's safe to say that ChatGPT has been massively overhyped and overpromised on what it can do reliably. I find it kind of funny how much sensationalism has been created by the media and certain AI developers with regards to chatbots, with some of them claiming that their models are showing signs of general intelligence and that it's teaching itself new languages, <laughs> which is pretty ridiculous. But yet these stories are being shown on mainstream networks. For example, this claim made by Google's CEO when he appeared on CBS is false, and there have already been several articles written about it recently that have debunked this statement. And then there's the really fringe people who have somehow turned this into a religion and claim that AI will someday become a godlike entity. Now let's be real for a minute. Let's say you were to ask ChatGPT a straightforward request, for example, to give you a recipe for a new dish you want to try or something along those lines. Most of the time it'll respond with a recipe, but there will be random instances where it will start spitting out a bunch of unrelated jargon, and sometimes in Chinese. Now most people would probably think that it's a buggy mess and not working correctly if that were to happen. They're not going to jump to the conclusion that it has somehow become self-aware and is teaching itself new languages. And just to be clear, it's not giving the recipe you asked for in Chinese, but rather it can give things that are completely unrelated, off-topic, and nonsensical. It kind of makes you wonder why the media and leaders in the industry would be so deceptive about this as if we should all be afraid that AI will replace everyone in the workforce soon, and that someday AI will take over the world. Personally, I'm not concerned about these things, but what I am concerned about is what certain people might do with these sort of tools. Just like any other tool, people can use them for good, or they can use them for evil. But the point is that it requires the intention of a person behind it. And knowing there are people who are intentionally misrepresenting what this technology can do doesn't sound very good to me. The public should be more concerned about potentially a group of people taking over the world, rather than being afraid about AI taking over the world. And while I do think AI is useful for certain applications, I think it's important to keep expectations in check, especially when it comes to the topic of general intelligence which won't be happening anytime soon, and to be honest, I'm not even sure if it's possible.
Anyway, maybe I'll do more commentary about this in another video. But that about wraps up everything I wanted to go over for today. Feel free to drop a comment and let me know what you think about this. I only showed three applications today just to give a general idea of how well Rockem performs with deep learning models and I'd say it looks very promising. Competition is a good thing, so I hope to see Rockem will continue to improve. If you enjoyed this video then be sure to give it a thumbs up. And like I mentioned earlier, I'll be doing an in-depth guide showing how to set this all up and we'll do a separate guide using an NVIDIA GPU as well. I'll also be posting written versions on my website to go along with the videos. Afterwards I'll be applying various AI models to some of my own customized projects, so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.